So this is part two of this battery series. Now there are 24 of these cells and when I picked them up there were a lot more than this. So I've already said that I filtered out the ones that went, were below 1.8 volts. Again, in certain situations that's a luxury. But it's worth doing it if you can. The other thing is I also brought home three extras just to allow for chaos like for instance that bad terminal it means that I don't have to use that cell because I brought home a few extras so if you remember last time we were boosting these two cells because this one here was particularly low and let's have a look at the specific gravity now Oh, that's pretty good. If you remember, it was about there. And now we're getting close to where we need to be. We just want to get all the cells fairly even. And that one, again, that was low, and that's very good. That's excellent. So now what I've been doing is I've been boosting from here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 I've been boosting these cells because these were all a little bit on the low side and that's looking good let's try a couple more now some people won't have thought processes to go through all of these and, and one at a time methodically and check and then maybe even write them down or mark them. But it's important to do that, you've got to be organised enough to do this. There's no point checking stuff and then immediately forgetting. So these are all looking very good now, and they weren't before, so I'm pretty pleased with that. The idea, as I said, was to get them all about even, and then give the whole pack a gentle boosting. See if, the, if there's been some extra strong acid added at some point. And we need to get all of these cells fully charged at the line between the white and the green and that's at about 1275 or thereabouts uh, that's the the number on the hydrometer so just coming back to uh, the whole business of bad connections I've got some few bits here so let's just zoom in So here's the top of uh, a battery, as you can see there is the, the lead post with the buzz bar broken off. So you know, this was a duff cell, it had, had some violence at some point. But as you can see there's the rubber seal and all it does is pushes in a parallel hole and there's the top of it. So that is a rubber seal and it's got corrugations in there. So if you constantly overfill these batteries so the electrolyte is right up to the top of the case then it's bound to seep up there and that's where all the corrosion starts. So it's important to have the uh, the electrolyte at the right level. Now then on some batteries you'll find there's a case there's a there's a top and they have this cage in here and even sometimes there's a ball in there for the automatic float systems. Well these cages are fine but you can't see the plates so some of these push out and other ones 
I cut them off just so I could see down there and see the electrolyte level see the plate but this is a sort of a guide to uh, where the electrolyte level should be and then the other thing was when you remove the tops there's these little pins and I'm just going to show you one hopefully we can see that the little pin there that one's broken off very easy to break off so when you're dealing with these caps always be careful with them and if you have an opportunity at the right point to gather or hoover up a few spare ones it's always a benefit so whilst we're here we'll continue down this side of the pack that's between the red and the white so that one's boosting up this one here I've got it marked with an F for full and yes it still is hopefully you can see that the main thing is I marked them as F for full and they should stay there the worst thing in the world is oh that's fully charged and then over the next couple of days it self discharges so you've got to be aware of that that's another full one this one says full on it as well and yeah that's good I'll just move the camera a bit better now this one isn't marked so there we go that one's boosting and that one's boosting not quite so much but it does and that one's middling so it's useful sometimes to number all the cells and then you can make a note of what's going on right as we've seen the specific gravity is all over the place and I've mentioned this before uh, if you've got a poor connections or a bad charging regime or it's not charged for long enough or the batteries are not equalized which means that you take them up to a slightly higher voltage and run and charge them at that so that the low cells come up and the high cells get a little bit extra charge that what happens is you haven't quite charged the battery up properly and then you run the fork of fork truck and then it sort of goes low on you so then you charge it up but you don't charge it up enough because you've got things to do so the 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 best cells charge up again the not so good cells or the ones that have been allowed to get a bit low never charge up so next time you discharge it the low ones go lower and so you end up with this imbalance and um, and then maybe you top them up and then you give them a good charge and the ones that were really low you've topped up quite well and so therefore as it charges up it fills right up to the top of the case with the electrolyte so you're started to, starting to build up a whole series of potential problems so what we're doing here with this pack is boosting all the low cells then we're going to give it a really long slow charge to bring everything up and even and then leave it for a couple of days and see if any of the uh, the cells have started to self-discharge 
So we're going to leave it at that for the moment. But this is all part of the process. You can't rush this. It might take up to a week to get it sorted. Uh, but we've got the two spare cells in the battery shed and they're being trickle charged. So if we have a problem with one cell, we can always swap it out.